Star Walker Studios presents Game Master's Journey, a podcast all about tabletop role-playing games from the perspective of the captain's chair. This episode is brought to you by Texas Beard Company. Use the coupon code GAMEMASTER for a 15% discount at texasbeardcompany.com. Mark Geringer returns to the show today with some tips if you're interested in writing for a company like Paizo. He also shares what it's like to MC the Pathfinder special with 1,200 players. So join me on the journey. Together, we can become Game Masters, truly worthy of the title. Hello, listener. Greetings, fellow GM and or player. Welcome to episode 52 of Game Master's Journey, your multi-dimensional RPG podcast. I'm your host, Lex Starwalker. I've got a great show for you today. Mark Geringer is coming back with some more discussion about his experiences in the role-playing game hobby, uh, specifically his experiences emceeing the Pathfinder special where he got to oversee a massive Pathfinder game of around 1,200 people. And also we talk about his experiences writing for Paizo and publishing scenarios and monsters with them. And uh, he gives some tips for you, if you're interested in doing something like that, of how you can get involved with Paizo or a company like them, and just how to attract the right kind of notice from a publisher. I'd like to give a quick shout out to Natural20 for your love. <laughs> I love that username. For your five-star review on iTunes, Natural20 for your love says, so many role-playing podcasts out there, this one tops most of them. Looking forward to hearing more. So thank you very much for that review. I really appreciate it. Also, I want to let you know here at the top of the show, if you are a fan of the upcoming PC game Star Citizen, I am having a giveaway for the Star Citizens United podcast in conjunction with my sponsor, Carrier Strike Group 3. And we are giving away a Reliant so if you are a star citizen player or you want to be a star citizen player go check out the star citizens united podcast at starwalkerstudios.com and enter the contest that will be running for a few weeks yet also if you're a patron of the show make sure and check out your patron feed at patreon.com starwalkerstudios I have recently uploaded some bonus content that, that you can download there. And if you're not a patron, uh, go check it out. You can just head to the show notes at starwalkerstudios.com. I have a Patreon button at the top of every episode and you can go check out my Patreon page. And yeah, it helps support the show, helps support the studio, all the shows that we make. And uh, I try very hard to keep the patrons up to date on what's coming in the future of, of the podcast. So, you know, if you're the kind of person that you like uh, getting some behind the scenes knowledge and, and advance warning of what's going to be coming down the pipeline, uh, that'd be very cool for you. And I also put up bonus content for the patrons. And something I'm working on right now is uh, some uh, outtakes from various interviews and just bloopers <laughs> from the various shows and going to compile those into uh, a nice recording for the patrons. And I'm also doing a monthly podcast just for the patrons that, uh, I don't know, I've done one so far. And right now it's looking like it's kind of a uh, behind the scenes of the studio, let you know what's going on with me, let you know what's going on with the various shows and just a chance for me to kind of speak directly to uh, some of my strongest uh, supporters and, and most loyal fans of the various shows. So definitely check out the Patreon page. So next week, episode 53 will be the season three finale episode of Game Master's Journey. 
And next week, I am going to be going through some feedback that I've received from you, revisit a couple topics from earlier in the season. And uh, yeah, well, I have I have lots of feedback, lots of great thoughts and ideas from listeners of the show. And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get through it all in one episode, but I'm going to try. And then uh, episode 54 after that will be the first episode of season four. And just a couple things I I want to cover real quick before we get Mark back on the comm. In episode 50, Mark and I mentioned the initiative system in Star Wars Edge of the Empire. Uh, Actually, all three of the the Star Wars games use the same initiative system, whether it's Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, or Force and Destiny. And uh, I realized later (laughs) that we talked about that, but I didn't tell you how the initiative system works. So for those of you that that haven't played the new Star Wars games, the way their initiative system works is pretty cool. Everyone rolls initiative, PCs and NPCs, and it works similar to games like D&D where the person that that scores best on that roll goes first and, and on down. However, the difference with the Star Wars initiative system is your role, instead of locking you yourself into a specific initiative slot, instead what happens is that role generates a PC initiative slot. So everybody rolls initiative, PCs, NPCs, and you end up with your initiative order which just designates whether it's a PC or an NPC's turn. Your initiative order might be something like NPC slot, PC slot, PC slot, NPC slot, NPC slot, PC slot, or whatever. And what's cool about it is then the players get to decide as far as their PC slots, who goes in which slot. So you may have rolled the best initiative roll, but that doesn't mean that your character has to go first. That just means that a PC gets to go first. And it's up to you guys which one of you goes first. And you're also not locked into that order among the PCs from round to round. So you could have a situation where you decide in round one that you are going to take the last PC initiative slot, which is the last initiative order, And then in the following round, you're going to take the first PC initiative slot, which is the first initiative order, and you effectively get to take your two turns back to back. Um, So there's a lot that can be done tactically with that as a group for the players, you know, deciding which of those initiative slots each player should take. And uh, it's also nice if you have a situation where based on your tactics, you need a certain PC to go first and that PC maybe doesn't have the best initiative role. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, And then also you can change that from round to round. So you can adapt to the battle as it unfolds. And it's also cool for the GM because the GM gets to do the same thing with the NPC slots. So I just thought I would explain how that works real quick because we we were discussing it a little bit and how uh, that won't work (laughs) in 5th edition D&D at least because of the way the spell durations work. Uh, Usually a, a spell that lasts for like say a round will specify it lasts until the beginning or the end of your next turn. And obviously if you're changing the turn order of the PCs, then you could extend that duration by a fraction of a round, which could have tactical significance depending on what's going on. So, you know, that I guess that's an example of, you know, you can take an awesome system from one game, but it may not work super well in another game just because of how the various games are are designed. So, you know, you could try to use the Star Wars system in D&D 5th edition, but then you'd have to decide how you're going to deal with the the spell duration thing. So I don't think it really works for D&D 5th edition, but it works really great in Star Wars. And I think it would be very easy to use that kind of initiative system in like Numenera, which already has a pretty loosey-goosey initiative system anyway. And uh, if you're a longtime listener, (laughs) all the way back from the GM Intrusions days, and then you may remember that uh, with with Numenera, there's a a few different ways you can do initiative. And I was usually a fan 
of the turn or side base initiative. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but basically where you just roll and as long as a PC beats all the NPC rolls, then all the PCs get to go before all the NPCs. And, uh, you know, I discussed on that show some of the positives and negatives of that system. Basically, the main positive is that it's really fast, right? It doesn't take long to resolve initiative, but it is very unbalanced and very swingy because you have either all the PCs going first or all the NPCs going first. So after the first round, it doesn't really matter, but it can make a big difference in that first round. And you can have combats where if the PCs go first, the NPCs never get a chance to do anything. (laughs) So I feel like the, the Star Wars system is kind of a nice middle ground between your more granular kind of initiative like you would have in say D&D or Pathfinder and the just really loosey-goosey initiative of of Numenera and I I feel like looking at those two extremes like there are some definite downsides you know with the D&D Pathfinder it's just initiative is a little more involved and takes a little more time at the table and with something like Numenera it's just a little too simplistic and and too swingy and too easy to game and and I feel like you know Star Wars system is, is a nice middle ground where there's some really interesting tactical possibilities there for the PCs and NPCs but it doesn't slow things down too much cuz you still just have the one initiative roll and then you're then you're done so that's how that works All right, well, it looks like I've got the monolith in position now, so I am going to get Mark back on the comm and talk some about role-playing. The Pathfinder special for last year uh, where they take you know the Sagamore Ballroom and they run 150 tables yeah. simultaneously. That's insane. Um, <laughs> I got to I got to MC that. Oh wow! I got to be the overseer GM for you know 1,200 of my newest friends. Like so, that was an amazing, <laughs> a completely different amazing experience, right? Yeah, I bet. Uh, so there's a there's an author here in town named Mike Shell who. Uh, has written uh, a bunch of stuff for Pathfinder. He wrote something called the Mud Sorcerer's Tomb uh, back in the uh, dungeon days that was really, a lot of people really loved it. It was really well received. Uh, and it came out in one of the playtest packets for Next. They had uh, touched it back up and, and used it for that. But uh, he's been doing a bunch of stuff for Paizo, and I got hooked up with him because he was looking for people in town to be able to playtest some of the stuff that he was writing. And so you know, I've been in a lot of contact with him over the years and kind of answering rules questions or mechanically, like, how would you approach this kind of thing? And he, he had asked several times and he had told me, you know, that he had asked, like, I've tried to get you credit on some of these things that I know that you've helped me on, but they just, the way that Paizo does it, like they don't do that per se Okay. on somebody else's work. Like they don't give partial credit or acknowledgement or, you know, something like that. And I'm like, dude, it's fine. You know, I mean, you're asking me a question. I'm answering your question. It's not, it's not a big deal. So when he was writing the special for last year, he did it with the idea in mind from the start that I was going to run it oh, as cool. a way to say thank you. Like that was like his thank you to me was like, if you're willing to do this, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to write it. And so he ended up picking the main orator for that is a guy who suspiciously looks a lot like me. Right. So, <laughs> so the costume was a lot easier to pull off because the guy already looks like me. Right. <laughs> nice. um, for your listeners, if you want to uh, look up uh, Venture Captain Crichton Shane, uh, he's an elf with uh, long blonde hair, you know, and a uh, vacant look in his eyes. And uh, so that's that's who that's who I was. He looks suspiciously like me. Uh, <laughs> and so it just worked out great. Right. So I showed up at the at the special uh, dressed up as Crichton Shane to be the overseer and and ran that and just unbelievable energy, you know, 
doing that, walking around that room, doing all the box text reads basically. And then um, they had this idea during the, during the special uh, campaign coins had made these um, Sahedlin medallions that are just beautiful. That is the, uh, from the rise of the rune Lords, that uh, seven pointed star. Yeah. 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 So they made that into this uh, necklace medallion and at the beginning of the at the beginning of the session before it started mike brock handed me like six of them i think and said during the course of the night i want you to give these to people for whatever reason you deem fit basically so you know i'm walking around the the whole sagamore watching all this go interacting with people everybody's like oh Crate and shane hey can you help us you know all these tables right characters are like asking me to come and intervene on their on their combats and stuff like that and it was a great time to you know to role play with these folks and and just go around and then to have these so once you know once i saw something again it was kind of like the inspiration thing like you know i'm looking for something i can't really tell you what i'm looking for but when i see it <laughs> i've got something for you you know so yeah. and in keeping with that you know young player mindset there was a couple you know because you're you're talking about a game that starts at seven o'clock p.m on uh friday night and runs till midnight and so there was a couple young players that I saw there that were, you know, that were toughing it out and having a good time or whatever. And they definitely got some uh, some medallions there just from that, again, from that experience. Like, how cool is that to uh, have that kind of experience as a as a young formative player to to have something like that happen? So yeah, that was really cool. That was a really cool opportunity to to do some, you know, some good gaming goodness. So so that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of my. You know, that's kind of my experience with Paizo and, you know, the Venture Captain program, doing freelance work for them and uh, all of that. So I'm happy to answer any other questions that you might have on those lines. I'm happy to talk more fifth edition as well, because that was that's been great. Lots of fun with my group. Well, I think a question that might be on the mind of someone listening right now is if I'm interested in maybe trying to to get something published or at least considered by a company like Paizo do you have any any tips or advice on on how to get started or where to go or I sure do I sure do I mean they so there's lots of good audio from PaizoCon and from Gen Con panels right they okay. the, the Paizo folks always do great uh, great seminars uh, talking about a lot of different things and it's it's not hard to find you know how to write for Paizo, right? There's they, they, I mean, they do seminars like this, and the kind of stuff that they tell you though is be professional, right? I mean, this is this is a profession. It's 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 my hobby, right? But it's their job, right? Right. So yeah. you need to keep that in mind that you know, even though this is all you know, fun uh, uh, fantasy elf games, at the end of the day, it's a business, right? And it needs to be approached like a business. So you need to you need to be able to be a reliable professional type of person in order to do this kind of stuff but as far as you know getting involved in this kind of stuff um, certainly uh, starting to volunteer is a great way to get your name out there you know start to get people familiar with you to learn what you're about there is a fan run project called Wayfinder uh, which they do I think they're doing two times a year now uh, which is a free PDF and then they publish a physical copy for PaizoCon, but it's all fan submitted content. And their their goal really is to kind of uh, almost to, to publish anybody who's interested, right? They want to give people a chance to see what that is like. Okay. You know, are you good at it? Can you do something that's, uh, you know, reasonably professional and this kind of stuff for a fan community project, right? And so that's a great opportunity to get some stuff, to get some feedback, uh, to start getting you know, knowing some people in the community and that kind of stuff. I've got several issues of Wayfinder that I've got adventures that, that got published in as well, because for a while there I was, I was doing the beginner box was, you know, was kind of my, my niche for, for a little while. Um, and so I did some other adventures for beginner box content for Wayfinder. And then they also do, uh, an open call, uh, Pathfinder yes. Society has an open call, uh, which is kind of, again, which is like, you know, I think right now the way it is, it's like 600 word submission. Okay. The guidelines are on the, on the website, 
but it's to give a toe in the water to put your best foot forward and show uh, John Compton basically where your head's at. What are you thinking? What are you bringing to the table? What are you kind of offering to see if that's somebody that he might be interested in developing as a as a resource, right? As a as a new author. Yeah. And uh, I know that in this last in season six that he pulled several new authors from that pool you know no problem uh and nice. so it does i mean the system works right it, it exists and it works and they're using it and uh it's definitely a way to to get your name out there but really i mean to to me it all it comes back to kind of like getting involved in that community right yeah you, you get involved in that community and then you start to meet people you start to talk to people you start to kind of build your own reputation and then things are going to follow from that so yeah that's kind of my experience anyway and what i've seen happen with plenty of other people who've gone on to be hired by paizo uh, as full-time employees so they they definitely like to uh, take you know take from the community because they have such a great community yeah. built up around them so well i have i've never gotten a adventure or monster published but um i have uh, been published in a magazine or two and have listened to a lot of authors talk about you know advice for getting published mm -hmm. so a couple things i'll add to what you said and, and you can tell me if this isn't right, <laughs> sure. but, um, whatever you're doing, whether it's like the open call or, or whatever, if, if they give you a set of guidelines, like this is what we want from you, do what they ask you to do. Definitely. This isn't the time to show your creativity and think outside the box and do something way out in left field. Because part of that is a test to see if you can follow directions right. because they want someone they can work with. Definitely. So follow the directions, whether it's, you know, I know with writing a lot of times it's like use this font, use this size, use this spacing, use these margins and right. not following those directions is like the first way they, they weed people out a lot of times. Right. Right. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that because another potential way in is through their RPG superstar program. Okay. Though I'm, I'm a little hesitant to mention that really for general kind of uh, general interest uh folks i think rpg superstar is not a good way to go because okay. it only happens once a year and it's really really involved for somebody who maybe is only trying to put their own toe in the water in the first place right okay but it is a very interesting competition in and of itself right you create a wondrous item or i think this year it's a wondrous item or a armor or a weapon and but again they have very very strict guidelines and word count and mm -hmm. formatting and stuff that goes yeah. into that yeah. and then when they open it up in the very first round even to get to the top 32 right they're uh, weeding through uh, hundreds and hundreds of submissions to get to 32 and in recent years they've taken it into this uh, hot or not kind of voting right where you get <laughs> you get two magic items on the screen and you pick which one you like better right and after several thousand clicks later you can aggregate out the bottom of those submissions and then start to get to you know what's the actual good submissions and this year when I started doing the voting I literally was just looking at the formatting of the last line that I could tell immediately, I could tell whether you followed the guidelines or not. Right. Because so for Pathfinder, for magic items in the construction requirements, if you have uh, spells, right, if, if it's based on a spell in any way, shape or form, you have to list that spell and the spell is not capitalized and it is italicized. Right. Yeah. So immediately i could tell just and that was i wasn't even reading the items right, i was just right. looking at okay i have two items on the screen one of them has lowercase italicized spell names one of them has unitalicized capital letter spell names like nope you that you it's not you the first item is clearly is better in, right. from that perspective is better because they were able to follow the directions and it was i was i was really shocked the number of submissions that I went through that did not follow that kind of that simple basic formatting requirement that is you know it's the same as so it's 300 word limit if you submit 310 words you're automatically disqualified right. because the limit is 300 and right. if you're one word over you're out and like just it's that same kind of thing like if they right if the if the publisher is giving you specific guidelines on a on a thing 
you need to follow those exactly to the letter. Mm-hmm. Uh, put on your lawful hat, right? And, <laughs> and, and follow those exactly to the letter. Exactly, yeah. Unless you have a dialogue with your developer and say, hey, here's the thing. I know you said it's supposed to be 300 words, but I need to make it 310 and here's why. Is that okay? Can we, you know, can we come to an agreement? Oh yeah, sure. No problem. Go ahead and do that. It's the same thing with uh, deadlines, right? Like you don't want to flake on a deadline. And if they know ahead of time that, Hey, I do need a couple of extra days and here's why. Cool. No problem. Thanks for giving me the heads up versus, you know, here's my turnover a week late. I'm sorry. I didn't talk to you. Like, you know, guess which one of those freelancers is getting, work in the future and which one isn't (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah totally yeah i uh i've been a a big fan of the podcast writing excuses uh since it since it very first started which is uh brandon sanderson howard taylor and i'm gonna blank on the other two authors that are part of that uh mary kowal and oh now i feel bad Maybe I can splice it in later. Right, and splice it in later. And the other one. <laughs> yeah, and, and the other guy. And I actually read his book, and I care. <laughs> one of his books. He's written more than one. It's Dan Wells, Lex. Dan Wells. Get it right. Gosh. Anyway, they've had editors on the show before who are the kind of the first line of defense with like submissions and, and kind of do okay. the first pass. Right. And And they've talked about how you know exactly what you're saying the first thing they look at is did you follow the submission guidelines and if you didn't you're getting thrown in the trash can and people do crazy stuff like spray perfume on the paper or use some (laughs) crazy like really artisan paper or or print it in some weird colored font or whatever and yeah none of that works (laughs) right right do what they ask you to do (laughs) right if you want to get their attention do what they asked you to do right like that's that's the way to get their attention but definitely right you're you're right on with that i mean follow the follow the directions that the the specific publisher is looking for because i know that uh kobold press for example you know they're looking for a slightly different uh set of guidelines on submissions and there's certain things that you know, one publisher might accept and another publisher might not accept as far as a kind of an open submission even. And so you, you do need to do your, your homework, right? You need to, you need to figure out, know your audience and, uh, and work towards that. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think part of the problem is, you know, we're all the heroes of our own stories. Right. And so it's very easy to think, well, I'm special. Right. And my stuff is really good and they're going to see how awesome I am and they'll make an exception for me. And right. Yeah. Right. Probably of not. Of course. Of course they will. <laughs> I'd like to take a minute to thank the sponsor for this episode, Texas Beard Company. Texas Beer Company produces all natural beard care products handmade in Texas. And you can visit their website at texasbeardcompany.com and fill your shopping cart with whatever goodies you'd like. And at checkout, if you use the coupon code GAMEMASTER, you will get 15% off your entire order. Texas Beard Company also has free shipping on all orders over $25, which is pretty cool. So I use their products myself and they have all kinds of products for your face. (laughs) Soaps and oils to keep your skin and your beard feeling great. So check it out at texasbeercompany.com and use the coupon code GAMEMASTER. In the very, very beginning, when I started playing Pathfinder and I learned about Pathfinder Society and I was just kind of gearing up for that, right? I, I played like maybe two games of Pathfinder Society or something. I barely knew anything about Galarian, hardly knew the rules even really at that point, to be honest. But I'm, I'm getting on the message boards and I'm seeing stuff and they have an open call, yeah. uh, which at that time was different because it was like a couple hundred word, but it was a, it was an adventure pitch, right? And it needed to, it needed to be set in a certain place in Andorin. And that was like, that was the only requirement. Right. So I did a bunch of research on Andorin and, and I, you know, I got my, my adventure idea together and put it out there. 
and it got rejected, of course, because why wouldn't it, right? <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, but the the organized play coordinator at the time, Josh Frost, had said, you know, hey, I can't I can't take the time to give you specific uh, feedback on this, but if you want to take it to the message boards, I'm sure there's plenty of people who would be happy to you know give you some feedback on what you can do better for next time. Yeah. So I did that and just got torn to pieces, right? Because oh, no. it was it was not good in the sense of I mean, I'm trying to write a, you know, I'm trying to propose something for Pathfinder Society when I really don't understand what the society in the game is about or how it works or any of this stuff, right? It was very okay. naive of me to think like, oh, I can, you know, I've DM stuff before. I write my own stuff. I can, you know, I can write an adventure. Right. Sure, I can. <laughs> can I write a specific adventure for this kind of thing, you know, with that knowledge base at the time? No, I could not. Yeah. <laughs> and, but it, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to get that feedback sometimes when you're thinking like, Oh, this is great. It, it makes perfect sense. You know, it has its own internal consistency and blah, blah, but it just doesn't meet the need or, you know, it doesn't fit in what they're looking for in that sense. So it just, right. Everybody's a special snowflake. Everybody's the exception to the rule and everybody can, you know, just uh, crank out the the next great thing, no problem, right? No, no. Unfortunately, that's that's not the case. It uh, it does, you know. It you gotta follow the rules sometimes. Unfortunately, I hate you know my my chaotic hat doesn't doesn't like <laughs> to hear yeah, I that. Hear you. But I hear you. But yep. the, the lawful hat sometimes has to come out. So. <laughs> Well, Mark, um, I, I really appreciate you coming on here tonight and, and talking with me about all this. This is uh, some really great advice, especially if there's anybody out there that is, you know, wanting to to take a shot at, at writing their own adventure or, or something like that. And and I, I know from from my days in Pathfinder that Paizo is really awesome about soliciting new talent from people who have never been published anywhere before it's someplace you can actually get your foot in the door which is pretty sweet yeah you, you definitely can so uh and like i said there's you know there's lots of good other uh convention panel audio and stuff that's out there that people can can find uh my main you know my go-to is through the no direction podcast because they they make a good point of partnering with PaizoCon and Gen Con and, and sitting in on all those panels and, and making that audio available to to their audience. So uh, if you're looking for that kind of stuff, that's that's definitely a, a, a place where you can you know uh, find it. Uh, and I, you know I love the show. I love you know uh, it, you and I seem like we have a, a similar philosophy and a lot of stuff with the gaming it seems like it yeah <laughs> so it's always it's it's nice to hear you know kind of the similar but not a hundred percent right so it's like in the same right, vein right. but there's a little bit different take on it so it's always good so i i always enjoy the show and i'm i'm happy to to be here and and talk to folks and you know just share my own experience like not to say that that is the way right because there's plenty of ways but this was my way so yeah awesome well i i really appreciate you being on and uh, I'm really excited to get this out to people because I, I know that there's a lot of people out there that are really wanting to try writing for games yeah so. uh, I'll give you uh, I'll send you my email address or you have my email address you can put it in the show notes if you want if people want to contact me directly with anything or questions or I uh, have Google Plus saying you know it's my it's my under my name Facebook if you do that or uh, I don't do the Twitter. I don't. I don't understand Twitter. I don't have a <laughs> use case for Twitter. I guess I don't. I, I've tried a couple times. I have a Twitter account, but I don't. Twitter is a lot of people transmitting, not many receiving. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and I just I don't like. I'm. Uh, I can't. I can't wrap my head around that. I like the Google Plus uh, quite a bit. I used yeah. to use that a, a lot more than I have recently, but I, I like that format quite a bit. But, you know, I'm, I'm a good old email guy. Just email me. I'll get back to you. No problem. And happy to answer questions or share experiences with, with other people. So awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Mark.
I want to thank Mark again for taking the time to talk with us today. I really appreciate it. Really fascinating interview and uh, great resource for any of you that are thinking that you might like to try to get something published uh, in your favorite RPG. Um, some great advice on uh, good ways to go about that. If you'd like to reach me, you can email me at gamemastersjourney at gmail.com. You can follow me on Google Plus, just search for Lex Starwalker, and you can follow me on Twitter at Lex Starwalker. You can visit the website starwalkerstudios.com, and there you can find the show notes, and I will have contact information for Mark there if you'd like to email Mark and talk with him about Pathfinder Society or RPGs or trying to get published with a company like Paizo, anything like that. Mark's happy to help you out. And also in the show notes, you can find a, a Patreon button that'll take you to my Patreon page donate button if you'd like to give a one-time donation to help support the show as well as itunes and stitcher buttons if you'd like to go to itunes or stitcher and subscribe and leave me a review i really appreciate the reviews and then at the bottom of the show notes you'll find a link to our google plus community page where you can connect with other gamers and listeners of the show as well as links to my YouTube and Twitch channels, a link to a free 30-day trial of Audible books, courtesy of Game Master's Journey, and my Amazon referral link. I hope that you have a chance to play your favorite RPG this week. I will be back next week with another episode of Game Master's Journey, the Season 3 finale episode. So until then, game on! This has been a Starwalker Studios production, your source for quality gaming and hobby podcasts. This episode's music provided by Cloudwalker, Renfield, Transboy, and Ish. Please see the show notes for more details at starwalkerstudios.com slash Game Master's Journey.